This year, 2010, is the centenary of Florence Nightingale's death. So over the past two years, we've been working to refresh and refurbish the museum. And tonight, the day before Florence Nightingale's birthday, 12th of May, um, we're reopening uh, the museum. We're really excited because it's our, our VIP event tonight, so it's all our senior funders and supporters and people who've helped us put the museum together. And of course, our patron, Princess Alexandra, is coming along and she's going to cut the ribbon. She's very important to us, because, not least because she has a, a background as a, as a trained nurse, so it's a very good combination for us. And her profile is, is wonderful in terms of what we've had to do for fundraising to make the new museum happen. Tonight she's going to come and she's going to meet some of our most important guests and funders and then she will officially cut the ribbon and open the museum. Well, can I just say one word to everybody? Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for asking me really to come back and reopen this wonderful museum. And I do congratulate all of you who have contributed to it because vast sums of money have been pouring in, I'm told. And just it's so nice to be with everybody tonight. Thank you. In the museum we've created three areas to look at the life of Florence Nightingale. So here we're sitting in the first area which looks at her early life, her childhood and the time before she went to the Crimea. So it is um, clad in what looks like a hedge, so you're meant, it's meant to convey a feeling of a Victorian garden, but it's really a bit like a maze as well, so it's the confines of her Victorian upbringing. And within this area, uh, our star object is Athena the Owl, which is Florence's pet. She found a baby owl in Athens and she rescued it and brought it up and hand fed it and it became her pet and she would carry it in her pocket. And we have the owl, it's now stuffed. Uh, in the museum. Uh, the second area of the museum is, deals with all of her time in the Crimea and it's clad in Turkish tiles and within the area there's uh, bandages and stretchers and that looks at all of her work in the Crimea, all she did uh, and also how she became famous during the Crimea war. And then we have the, the final area, which is really all of her life's work, so all of the work she did after the Crimea. And that area is created to look like a library, so as if you were in a, a, a library at home. And that's because when she returned from the war, she was ill and actually spent a lot of time in bed. So her life's work, the rest of the work she did, so campaigning and reforming, she did mostly from her room, in her, her bed in her room at home in uh, London. And so that area is to convey that. There's quite a few correspondence between Florence and Queen Victoria while she was in the Crimea and afterwards. And she gave her a, a, she gave her a brooch to thank her for all of her work that she did in the Crimea. And the brooch was actually designed by Prince Albert. But there was quite a few correspondence between her and, and following the Crimean War as well. Um, they met several times. Um, there was certainly lots of correspondence between them uh, following Florence's campaign to set up a royal commission following the crime of the uh, The museum is on the site of St Thomas's Hospital, so we are almost in the car park of St Thomas's, so we're a little tucked away, but if you come into the car park of St Thomas's, you'll see us.